So this little Wacom mouse seemed like a really nice target for reverse engineering. The most complicated part of the circuit is actually just for converting the mouse wheel sensors outputs into bits for scrolling up and down. This chip is for scrolling up, and this chip is for scrolling down. To see why this is all necessary, let's take a look at the quadrature signals that come out of the mouse wheel encoder. The wheel encoder in the mouse acts kind of like two buttons that press in sequence as you scroll the mouse. By looking at which edge arrives first, we can tell which direction the mouse is scrolling in. Quadrature is just the practice of using two signals that are 90 degrees out of phase with each other so that we can detect both the speed and the direction of this wheel motion. Even just looking at one of the quadrature signals and spinning the mouse wheel, we can start to see why this decoder circuit is necessary. With the magnetic packets on the top trace and one of the quadrature signals on the bottom trace, we can see that if we were only pulling this quadrature signal every time the tablet asked for an update, we'd be missing quite a lot of information. Both of the quadrature outputs have a little bit of RC filtering on them before they go into the decoder circuit. All right, there's the quadrature signal scrolling up, scrolling down. But now that we're inside the quadrature decoder, we can see that the A and B signals are being used a little differently. The A signal feeds the data input on all four of these flip-flops, which have the opportunity to sample that signal at different points in time. In this case, some of the flip-flops are being set up to sample when quadrature B goes high, and some are sampling when quadrature B goes low. This lets us build a logic circuit that makes determinations based on what state quadrature A is in any time quadrature B changes. Well, here's quadrature A on top, and the somewhat cleaner looking quadrature B on bottom that's been through a couple of inverters. And as long as I'm spinning the mouse wheel up, quadrature A will be in a high state whenever we see quadrature B have a positive edge. And if I spin the mouse wheel the other way, we can see the opposite phase relationship. And every time the scope triggers, quadrature A is low. The way these flip-flops are wired, they can be set to sample either the positive or the negative edge of quadrature B using either this clock or this clock. By wiring either the inverting or the non-inverting output to this AND gate, you can choose what state to require quadrature A to be in when that edge happened. So this flip-flop is only detecting half of the scroll-up events, just the ones with a positive edge on quadrature B. Now this one's detecting the other half of those upward scrolling events on the negative edges. This NAND gate that's being used to generate the scroll down and the scroll up signals is actually kind of misleading, since the logical operation here is more like an OR. If we want to see a 1 on this scroll up output, it means we need to see a 0 on either of these inputs to the NAND gate. Since one of these flip-flops is inverted, that actually means that we want this flip-flop to be a 1, or this flip-flop to be a 0. This flip-flop is clocked when the B signal goes from 0 to 1, whereas this flip-flop is clocked when the B signal goes from 1 to 0. This circuit gives us a chance to detect upward scrolling on either edge of the quadrature B signal. And we're just looking for these kind of ghost outlines of the proper A signal. This bottom circuit is triggered by the same flip-flop states, but the clock edges here are reversed. Now we have half of our scroll down events, and here's the other half of our scroll down events, now on the falling edge of quadrature B. In addition to detecting the phase relationship between the two signals, this circuit also has the important job of latching the scroll signals until the next packet can go out to the tablet. Both of these circuits use a NOR gate to provide two different ways to reset both flip-flops into their inactive states. One of those reset inputs is wired up to the opposite scrolling direction, so scrolling up will immediately cancel a scroll down and vice versa. The other reset signal is generated by this circuit, which gives us a reset pulse as soon as we're finished loading the flip-flop. This circuit will convert a rising edge on this signal, or the falling edge on load enable, into a short pulse that both of these NOR gates can see as a reset for their corresponding flip-flops. There's our very brief reset. Well, there's the final scroll up signal. And there's scroll down. We can see that scroll up and scroll down stay latched until the next packet goes out to the tablet, ensuring that we don't miss any scrolling events.